Shakun Batra has Gehraiya, an interesting star cast, Ananya Pandey and Deepika Padkon. As you sit through this movie for about two hours and over, you feel like telling all those who rush to the OTT platform to make films, please can you reduce the length of your narrat narrations. Two hours and twenty minutes of smooch, two hours and twenty minutes of emotive uh, infidelity are hardly something, are hardly the kind of things you want to sit at home and watch over a period of two and a half hours. It's toxic enough the world around. I am not saying go back to the 60s and make those lovely romantic singing Shankar Jekishan songs over the gardens and all that, but that seems like a nice era now in compare. There is just this much that the human element can take. And it makes both artistic and commercial sense to understand that the laws of elasticity are also applicable to emotions. To overstate the physicality of a human relationship, even within the gloss of our cinema, mainstream cinema, and the rich and the beautiful, it takes a beating and you get a little tired at the end of it all. And that is not the idea, I am sure, that director Shakun Batra had when he went about making Gehraya. You get a feeling that uh, the director is trying to sound very robust in his frankness about dealing with the young and happening people. But I think it gets counterproductive. Storyline, you have two couples, Alicia Deepika Patkon and her cousin Ananya Pandey. Both are in relationships while Alicia is with a budding writer Karan played by Dharia Karwal. Uh, younger Taya Teya is in an affair with Zain Siddhant Chaturvedi. They both, all four of them meet on a ranch for a holiday, suggestive of the high income group in which while Alicia, Tia and Karan were friends, it is Zain who has come into the group, but there is an immediate chemistry between Alicia and Zain. Both of them end up cheating their respective fiancés, while Alicia has a fig leaf that her boyfriend is in a no move inertia. There is nothing that justifies Zain except that psychologically he feels he is what he is, thanks to the financial support he is getting from Thea. This is the basic storyline. There is not a sentence in the film where the F letter word is not used. Suddenly, we seem to believe that using the word fuck means you are a very liberated person, which is not true at all. It shows a lack of uh, vocabulary in a person or it shows a very attitudinal sense, which does not really go with each of those characters. And uh, it seems that whenever the dialogue writer did not have a word to use, he used up the four letter explicit. The movie is tedious. What keeps the movie going though is the very interesting performances from Siddhant Chaturvedi as the young lover, caught between the business demands that he has, his dependent romance with Tia, and his physical attraction. To Alicia. Obviously, there is this fig leaf, you are going to say that it is not just physical, it is emotive, but you do not see too much of that in the story. The moment Alicia becomes pregnant, hell gets loose 
and various questions come up. None of them are really answered because suddenly the script moves from the romance and the love angle to a business angle, enforcement directorate and all the kind of stories in the back. The end of which you have more questions than answers, which is good enough. You do not need to, uh, it's, after all it is not a education guide where you need to get answers for everything. But then, if you are just throwing questions without any kind of a conclusion to your story, then there is a creeping intellectual or artistic dishonesty in your narrative and therefore it takes you nowhere. Yet another aspect of the film is Deepika Patkorn. It is surprising that in just a few years she was a younger little girl and today she is the elder sister. So, she is already donning the new hat. She has evolved into that level very well and kudos to her for that seamless evolution. It is not that she is playing Badi Behen, she is still the provocative, good looking lady who consumes most of the sex space in the film and she is amazing. She has the grace of Wahid Rahman sometimes. In fact, there is a song in the film where she is in a car with Siddhartha and uh, there is a number that is reminiscent of the fizz that Wahida Rahman gives to Aaj Fir Jine Ki Tamanna Hai in Kai, another masterpiece montage of our cinema. But then the problem is, uh, Padkorn sometimes tends to look a little too, too good to be true, sometimes bordering on being synthetic. And that robs her and the film of that intensity that the film would require. Look at how the Deepti novels and the Shabana Asmi is carried that, that tight rope of romance and adultery with a sense of reward and guilt, which is missing here. It tends to be very physical, and that is where you look at the emotive content of the times and you ask whether our relations are so wafati, are they all just bedroom in function? Are these translated reflections of a time where emotional integrity is suspect? large questions answered within the framework of two and a half hours on an OTT platform, Geranya falls every time Dipti falls every time Deepika Putkorn tries to pull it up. If you are a Deepika Putkorn fan, I am telling you this is much better than her Sanjay Leela Bansali outings and arguably one of her best outings in terms of acting skills notwithstanding the fact that the promos seem very steamy, they may be irrelevant, but both Siddhant and Deepika have tremendous chem body chemistry with one another. The story could have been far better handled. Ananya Pandey leaves an impression. Apart from that, there is not much to recommend in the film. Gehranya unfortunately is very peripheral. Thank you for watching. Look forward to your comments. Thank you Datu. Thank you Abhinav. See you later.